What's up everybody, this is Thonius and I wanted to share with you a new video about dragons. I've been curious about a lot of things like sweep damage, leveling, speed, etc. So I did a lot of research over the last month and I'm excited to share with you the results today. But before we get started, I have a handful of what I heard are really good codes to give away. So this is the last week, make sure that you do the following two steps. First, make sure you're a subscriber to my channel. If you already are, you've already done step one. And second, write sweep damage in the comments below. I'll be doing the first drawing this Sunday, August 23rd, and I'm going to be giving a few away on my Twitter account. That's Thonia, C-T-H-O-N-I-A-S. So be sure to check both out, and I'm going to be giving them all away this week. Good luck, everybody. So I'm going to start off by showing you what I learned about leveling dragons. Did you know that it takes more Primus to level a dragon than it does a regular Ancient? It doesn't matter what level it is, an epic, rare, etc. It just matters whether it's a dragon or a regular everyday ancient. You can see here to level a regular ancient like Hagar to level 21, it would take 6,000 Primus. But to level a dragon, like let's say Four Veil, it would take 9,000 Primus. Out of curiosity, I decided to look up how much it would take to level it from level 21 all the way to level 30. You can see for a regular ancient, it would take 85,700 Primus, and for a dragon, it would take 128,550. Now what about the gold? This is a little bit different. This is depending on whether you use all five slots every time you upgrade and what level of Primus you use. I'm going to assume here that we only used 1000 Primus each time and we used all five slots. So this is how much gold it would take to level it for a regular Ancient versus a Dragon. And what if you wanted to take an Ancient all the way from level 1 to level 50? Using that same assumption of 1,000 Primus each time and using all five slots, for an Ancient it would take 129 million gold, and for a Dragon about 194 million gold. And then I got curious how much Primus it would take to level it from 1 all the way to level 50. According to the wiki, it would take 959,325. That's right, almost a million Primus. If we were going to make that same assumption that we'd get 1,000 Primus per chest, that would take 960 chests. If you have the correct element, that's one out of four tries, I multiplied it by four, that's 3,840 chests. And since about two-thirds of the time we get boosts, I've increased the amount to 11,520. If we're doing multiplayer, we'd need two battles to get one chest. So in order to get 11,520 chests, we need 23,040 battle stones. And if we're going to fail, let's say, on streak 11, that means we'd need 25,344 battle stones. So how much time would it take to generate each stone? At 20 minutes each, that means we would need 506,880 minutes to generate that many stones. That's 8,448 hours, or 352 days or basically 11.7 months. That's almost a year without sleep in order to level Taliesin all the way to level 50. But don't get too discouraged because I did make the assumption that you're only getting 1,000 Primus each time, and they also are making changes to the Primus drop rates. I noticed in the arena that much higher amounts of Primus are dropping, 5,000s and 10,000s. I'm actually compiling the statistics of the arena chests, and I'll be doing a video for that soon. Also, you don't have to have your dragon all the way to level 50 to be effective. I've noticed that at level 30, just about any dragon will work at these high level bases, SH14 and SH15. And getting them to level 30 really didn't take me that long. Uh, for all four of them, it only took me a few months. Okay, since I have them all to level 30, let's take a look at what we do know about them. You can see the health, DPS, target damage, speed, attack speed, range, and troop size that you can get from their website. I'm not exactly sure what troop size is for, considering you can never really put another dragon into a troop slot, although that would be interesting to have all four dragons on a battlefield. But let's take a look at this stat speed. Medium, fast, very fast, medium. What does that even mean? I did some tests and I'm gonna show you one example right now. I used all four dragons on the same base in a Sunstaff outpost. You can see here that I've dropped them all in the same spot. And right here, you can see the photo finish between all four dragons. Not that huge of a difference, considering the dragons don't really need to move that far in this game. Now you can see here that the sweep is pretty much the same for all four dragons. I did stop slightly high on the four veil, and then I allowed them to move up. I think there was a glitch with four veil because he got there incredibly fast. I didn't do too much more testing on this, but I did try to observe it a little bit more, and it looks like this might have been just a one-off instance. And in case you're curious, here's a side-by-side -side of the damage done for one sweep for all four dragons. 
All right, let's take a closer look at sweep damage. This took the most amount of time for me to research. I documented every structure on a base. I looked at the sweep path to see exactly which buildings were affected. And I went to the wiki and I found out the hit points for each structure. I organized them by the number of hit points it had per structure, and then I came up with some theories of how many sweeps it would take to destroy it per dragon. You can see an early iteration here of Emberclaw and Talison, and how many sweeps my theory was in order for it to destroy it. Then I'd go and try and find bases and test out those theories. I would document how many sweeps it took and compare them to each other, the amount of damage each time. I'd put them into a spreadsheet and I'd compare them to each other so I can see how many sweeps it took to destroy it completely or how they compared to other dragons and other levels. Okay, so here's the results I have for sweep damage. I've added it to the list that I showed earlier. Now this is unofficial and not exactly perfect, but it is my best assumption. You can see here with Four Veil, we have 65 damage per sweep, plus the additional effect of Freeze. Emberclaw, 212, including his Burn. Uh, Talison is 209, including his Lightning, and 229 for Viscaria, including the Poison. Now, according to Space Ape, the Burn, Poison, and Lightning does not do additional effects. It's just the damage. Now, of note is that it is pretty consistent damage. It's not variable like the target damage is. Take a look at these walls, for example. They all look pretty consistent compared to each other. Even the first sweep and the second sweep seem to have exactly the same amount of damage. So does sweep damage increase with levels? It does seem to do so. At level 12, Talison can barely take down a builder. So I'm gonna assume he's about 145 with the sweep damage. At 24, he was about 180, somewhere around 190. Between 25 and 26, I could barely tell the difference between them. So I left them both at 190. And at level 30, he was at 209, which is what I posted in that list before. So this does support that theory that sweep damage only increases every five levels, just like it does with the other stats. You can see here with Talison, the lightning dragon levels, that's every five levels. That's when the hit points, the target damage, and the damage per second increases. The other levels do not increase its damage or hit points. So where do you find out about your dragon's hit points and damage? Now, the normal way you access your Ancients, you only have access to its story. Thanks to my kingdom mates at iBoss, I-B-O-S, that's a plug for our kingdom if you're looking to join one, they told me that the only way to access it is by clicking on your dragon roost and then clicking choose an Ancient. So you can see here you have access to only your dragons, nice and efficient, and when you click on one of them, here is where you have access to their health, damage per second, target damage, and other info, not their story. So something I hear a lot is, what is the best dragon? It really depends on the situation. In this case, I needed the highest amount of single damage output. At the time, Four Veil was higher than my Viscaria, and Four Veil has higher single damage output. So in order to be able to get the Stronghold down in time, and this one was literally the last second, I was able to get it down. If that was Viscaria, I would have lost. Or in this case, I wanted Viscaria to be the tank because she had more hit points. So I just set her on the side here and let her take the distraction away of the Frost Tower, leaving one tower less for my troops to deal with. All right, so let's take one last look at this chart and evaluate their strengths and weaknesses. So I'm going to put a little gold icon next to what they're best at. Viscaria is clearly best at tanking and best at sweep damage. For their direct damage output, Emberclaw and Talison are very close together. It's no surprise since they're brother and sister. And for Silver, Talison is good for tanking, and Talison and Emberclaw are pretty much equal at sweet damage. Emberclaw is slightly higher. I did a lot of testing to make sure of this, and she really is slightly better at sweep damage than Talison, but not by much. And in last place with Bronze, we have Health is Forveil and Emberclaw. Last place for target damage is Viscaria with 47 damage. Sweet damage lowest is Four Veil with 65, but of course the freeze is very nice if you want to do crowd control. Now do not underestimate Four Veil. I used him for most of my gameplay until I was able to get Viscaria high enough recently to use her a lot more. And as an Ancient, I still use him all the time on high level bases that use exclusively Frost Towers. He's still really amazing and very useful. 
Now, in my opinion, all this talk about one dragon being overpowered versus the others, I don't really see it anymore. After comparing the level 30s to each other, I see each of them has some really nice strengths and weaknesses. I think that Space Ape did a really nice job of balancing them out. It might seem like something is overpowered, probably because somebody that's attacking your base has a dragon that's much higher than yours. So it's the level that matters, not really the dragon. Any dragon that is your highest is probably the one you should be using. So if you have Emberclaw but not Talison yet, that's fine because Emberclaw, you can tell, is so similar except for 100 less hit points. But if you're comparing all of them at the same level, they're all great. My personal favorite, of course, right now is Viscaria because she's the most flexible. I like having her tank and last a little bit longer than the others. Sweep damage is great. Um, and the longer a dragon lasts, the more mayhem they can cause. And speaking of mayhem, let's also talk about Malice, the new legendary ancient that's going to be coming out. That's right, legendary. A new level, level 60, this is going to be the first ancient that's going to allow you to get that high. But let's be honest, I'm basically only going to be worrying about getting it to level 30, considering how hard it is to even get something to level 50 right now. Now, some of the things I'm listing here are rumors. Everything is up for change, maybe even the way she looks. It is confirmed, though, that it is a she. So it's going to be the first legendary ancient, as I already said. Um, it might be available as an upcoming statue, a legendary statue. Um, the sweep is likely going to be high damage plus lifesteal. And then we've got three spells that are rumored. Chaos Breath, Disruption, Masochism. The first one coats buildings in black flame, but considering it's a death ancient, it's probably gonna be a blackish purple flame. Uh, disruption, target unable to act and untargetable. That'll be interesting and probably a little difficult. Masochism, incoming damage heals. It's probably also considered lifesteal. Also only obtainable through a kingdom event, not through a chest. That'll be interesting. It's gonna be a lot more about community building, uh, team ranking, and uh, yeah, just team building exercises. So if you do wanna join a kingdom, IBOS, spelled I-B-O-S, it stands for it'll be over soon. We're a fun kingdom, we're extremely active, we love raiding, and we love events. All right, so there you have it. I love dragons, I know everybody in this game loves dragons. I was looking to dispel a lot of the myths and rumors and all the other stuff that we just quite didn't know and couldn't put our finger on. Always at people asking questions, what's the best dragon, overpowered, not overpowered? Well, I hope this video helped you out. Don't forget about the promo code. I showed it at the beginning of this video on how you can win one, one of the last ones for this last week. Follow me on Twitter for more at Thonias, C-T-H-O-N-I-A-S. And hopefully we can talk some more. I've got another video coming up about arena chests. A lot of statistics about that. I think you'll really enjoy it. And as always, thanks so much for your support. All this sharing, liking, subscribing, I really appreciate it. Keeps me making more videos. Thanks so much. Take care.